say something. Just a couple of brief points us flat earthers like to talk to people about. I was starting to get really uncomfortable then. Okay, brief. Are they brief points though, Chris? Because you do have a tendency to shoot off on a tangent whenever the mood takes you. Uh, it's just everyday sh** when, when you look at the moon. And that's fine. I don't care what we talk about as long as it's entertaining, Christopher. Please subscribe. You see every single impact on the moon has a exact same trajectory. Uh, no, impact craters on the moon do not have exactly the same trajectory. Asteroids and meteoroids can strike the moon from any direction and at any angle. A direct vertical impact will create a different crater shape than a glancing blow. The speed and size of the impacting object also play a significant role in crater formation. A larger, faster object will create a larger and deeper crater than a small, slow object, even if they impact at exactly the same angle. The trajectory of an impact, along with the size and speed of the impactor, significantly influences the shape, size and depth of the resulting crater. Who told you they were all the same, Chris? Was it another flat earther? It was, wasn't it? It was another flat earther. Same thing. It isn't the same thing at all. You said they were all exactly the same. I explained why they're not. You know, in Hollywood, what they like to do is they, they like to they like to come up with these streaks of meteors, and comets coming down, forming this like skid mark, shall we say, and then all of a sudden the explosion. You know. What's this obsession you've got with Hollywood, CC? And talking about skid marks, your tongue's probably got skid marks on it. The amount of crap you talk. Just like the uh, comet they just, or asteroid that they just got, uh, they, they just photographed it. And, and another thing, why the hell are you even watching me right now? Shouldn't you be preparing? Do you mean the asteroid that some people are describing as Earth's second moon or Earth's new mini moon? Because to be honest, I'm really shocked that we haven't heard more flat earthers talking about that. They're probably freaking out over it. Because in the next couple of years, we have a high chance of probability of a meteor hitting this Earth. Meteoroid impacts on Earth are surprisingly common, though it depends on what size you're talking about. Earth is constantly bombarded by tiny dust-sized meteoroids. Millions of these particles enter the atmosphere every day, but they usually burn up and are completely invisible to the naked eye. And even if we were talking about larger impacts, maybe the size of a car, they hit the Earth about once a year as well, but they also usually break up in the atmosphere and fragments may reach the ground as meteorites. So I have no idea why you're trying to frame this as if it's some rare, scary event, because it isn't. That's right. That's right, that's an impact of the Earth that'll destroy everything on it. And you don't think that if the destruction of Earth was imminent, somebody might have mentioned it to us? You know, like one of the space agencies that monitor for these sorts of things? <laughs> that's right. So you should be preparing this. You shouldn't be watching me right now. Right, prepare for the end of the world or make a response to one of CC's videos. Hmm, let me think. Anyway, so, you know, the, the, the space news, of course, what, what do they do? They get this pathetic picture of uh, uh, the meteor coming down like this. It's always going down. Yelling to me. It's always going sideways. It's never coming up to the horizon after all of these years now. <laughs> Now I could just go ahead and explain to you why we don't see meteorites coming up over the horizon, but there's somebody who's far more qualified than me to explain it. Gravity! Have you ever heard of f***ing gravity? Gravity! Gravity! 15 years of smartphones out there. 15 years now, and they still haven't changed a bit. Chris, we've been through this before, pal. Smartphones have changed enormously in the last 15 years. And if you think they haven't, then maybe you're due for an upgrade. Same exact thing. I made a video about that about five years ago. Same fucking thing. They haven't changed it. It's almost that we peaked. Oh, that's right. The Apple just came out with a new one, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. They came out with a new one. It looks exactly the same Apple that it did when it first came out. What? 
Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now, to stay on the topic of phones not changing at all in the last 15 years, I've got a question for you, Chris. You film your videos on your phone, don't you? Or at least that's what it looks like. Were you able to record high-resolution video on your smartphone 15 years ago? I don't think you were. Something, but never. With all these cameras that are out there, there are, there are people that have taken pictures of things that are amazing, but yet we still do not have a picture of a comet coming up the horizon. Yeah, but that's only because they don't. See, in the real world, Chris, we have to worry about this little thing called gravity and so the meteorites. Why has nobody taken a picture of an asteroid coming up over the horizon? I could ask you why, using the same logic, nobody's been able to photograph the flat Earth, but I don't. Not a single one. After all of these years, and all of these people and all of these cameras out there, not a single picture. Not one. Not one single picture of a meteor or a comet landing on Earth. So tell me again that there's no footage of asteroid impacts here on Earth? Now, were they filmed on a phone or were they filmed on a camera? That I don't know. But you said there were no videos of asteroid impacts. And you're wrong. And creating a nice hole in the ground. Never. Oh yeah, sure, we have streaks, we have that. You see, God, he or she, whoever it may be, has an amazing sense of humor. Well, if he was real, I suppose he'd have to have a good sense of humor, wouldn't he? Because if he was real, it would be his fault that we even have flat earthers. Okay. At certain times, uh, you'll see meteor showers and comets come by, and so, some, sometimes you might even have a plane that goes up there and drops something on us and creates a little streak in the sky. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They, they do that too. Of course they do, Chris. So you are the type of flat earther who says that space isn't even real anyway. So where exactly do you think all these asteroids, comets and meteors are coming from? Because they would have to be coming from a place you think isn't real in the first place. So, uh... What the hell are you talking about? Even a flat earth would need to be somewhere? But sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have like something that's like Halley's Comet. Okay? It comes from once every 76 years. And if you really believe that that's a comet or a meteor, or whatever the hell they call it, it is, you are delusional. Observations of Halley's Comet have been recorded for centuries, going back to at least 240 BC. Now, in 1705, Edmund Halley used Isaac Newton's laws of gravity to predict the comet's return in 1758. And this successful prediction was based on scientific calculations, and it solidified our understanding of Halley's Comet as a periodic object with a predictable orbit. So we know when it's coming. So we need to ask ourselves a question. Which is more delusional? Accepting the huge amounts of evidence and the predictability of Halley's Comet or believing that the Earth is flat and that space is fake? Hmm, let me think for a moment. Okay, to have this thing revolving around us while we're spinning into space and chasing the sun and the universe, and this little meteor is still tracking along, coming along at the same time every year. Every year? So we're not talking about Halley's Comet anymore then? because that appears roughly once every 76 years. And the reason Halley's Comet is so predictable is because we know that it has an elongated elliptical orbit around the sun. And the sun's really far away, Chris. 93 million miles. I mean, not every year, every 76 years or whatever it may be. Whew, well, that was a close one, Chris. Yeah, it's roughly every 76 years. But to be technically correct and a little bit pedantic, it can vary anywhere from 74 to 79 years. Okay. I mean, you, you really have to be delusional to believe that. You have to be delusional to believe that we live on a spinning wet ball. Even though that's what all the evidence shows us. You know, we can predict weather and all sorts of things because we know so much about the shape of the planet we live on. You've been told that. You've never been proven it though. But Chris, there are so many different ways of demonstrating that the Earth is a curve. If I was to start saying them now in like a list format, this would probably be a 24 hour video. Why did I just say there are so many different ways of demonstrating that the Earth is a curve? 
the Earth has curve. I think I probably meant there are so many different ways of demonstrating that the Earth is an oblate spheroid. Can anyone else smell burnt toast? Now, when you look at flat Earth, I would agree with you that there is absolutely no evidence to support that. And if you believe it, you're delusional. But saying that you're delusional, if you believe or accept the evidence for what is based in reality is, well, it's... See, that's the thing. Everybody always says, oh, well, I want proof of of flat earth. I want I want pictures. I want I, I want to know where I want to I want to see the ice wall. And I think those are all very reasonable requests. But whenever you make that request to a flat earther, all you ever get is it is. Definitely I know it is. Okay, you know, we call it the ice wall, but basically it's a shoreline. Okay? It's like a lake. Well, that definitely isn't confusing, is it? Which is it? Is it like a shoreline or like a lake? Now, I know a lake would have a shoreline, but a shoreline and a lake are not the same thing. That's what Antarctica is like. A lake. It contains the water in. And in the water, we have these little things called continents. Yes. That's what we live on. So we're talking about the ice wall then, Chris. Well, first of all, you do understand that this isn't Game of Thrones. And secondly, and this is very important, have no flat earther ever realized that an ice wall wouldn't hold anything in because ice floats. We don't know how far it is to get to the dome. We have no idea. Well, yeah, thanks for that, Captain Obvious. We know you have no idea. Could be miles, could be hundreds of miles, could be 200 miles. All we know is the top brass know how long it takes to get there. And they know what it's, well, they, they may not know what it's made of, but they know it's there. Ah, right, silly me, of course, the top brass know. And when you say the top brass, or when any flat earther says the top brass, I can only assume they're talking about the infamous they and them. Up until the mid-1900s, we were all taught that we live on a flat earth, stationary, not moving. And then everything changed. Bingo, Chris, you've just hit the nail on the head. Things did change. Our understand... Hang on, what the hell am I on about? We've known that the earth is a globe for thousands of years. They took that map, they wrapped it in around a ball, and they put you into space. Oh, Chris, I think you're a little bit confused. Because it was actually the other way around. We already knew that the Earth was an oblate spheroid, and when people made maps, like the AE map, every flat Earther's favorite, that was unwrapped from a ball and made flat just so that it's easier to look at. That was in, in the mid-1920s. Uh, we didn't go into space. How do we know we lived on that? As a matter of fact, we didn't even really go into space until the 50s or the 60s. But you don't actually need to go into space to prove to yourself that you live on an oblate spheroid. You just have to take measurements and make observations of things like ships disappearing from the bottom up. But oh no, flat earthers don't believe actual evidence, do they? Interesting. Hollywood, I've been saying this for so long, guys. It's satanic. And that may well be true, Chris, but I am not getting stuck in another conversation with you about Hollywood. You do this in every video you publish. It, 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 it. That's all, folks. Okay, so here it is. The first video of Monday to Friday uploads throughout the entire month of November. I am going to get to 100,000 subscribers before the the calendar switches to 2025 or I'm gonna die trying. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you, well I'll see you tomorrow when I love you, bye. I don't think so, no, 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 I don't think so, no, 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 it's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. Stop this bullshit. Ah, I'm